We start by evaluating f of f of x, plugging in the value of fx, this is equal to f of x upon 1 plus x raised to the power n, whole raised to the power 1 upon n, which using the expression for fx is equal to x upon 1 plus x raised to the power n, whole raised to the power 1 upon n, divided by 1 plus x raised to the power n divided by 1 plus x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. This simplifies to x upon 1 plus 2x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Let's denote this by result 1. Now we will prove a more general result that f of f of and so on m times of x is equal to x upon 1 plus m x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Let's denote this by result 2. Now we'll prove result 2 by mathematical induction. We have already established that formula 2 is true when m is equal to 2. Next, let's assume that the result is true for some number k as well. In other words, function of a function and so on, k times of x is equal to x upon 1 plus k times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Let's call this result 3. Now the function of both sides of result 3 will also be equal. So on the left hand side we have function of a function and so on k plus 1 times of x is equal to f of the right side which is f of x upon 1 plus k times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Using the expression for fx, the right hand side is equal to x upon 1 plus k times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n divided by, in brackets, 1 plus x raised to the power n divided by 1 plus k times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. This is equal to x upon 1 plus k plus 1 times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Notice that the right hand side is the same as the right hand side of result 3 except that k has been replaced with k plus 1. Hence by finite mathematical induction it follows that formula 2 is valid for all natural numbers m. In other words, function of a function and so on, m times of x is equal to x upon 1 plus m times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. This will be valid when m is equal to n as well and therefore we have the result that function of a function and so on, n times of x is equal to x upon 1 plus n times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n. Notice that the left hand side is equal to gx. Therefore, integral x raised to the power n minus 2 times gx dx is equal to integral x raised to the power n minus 2 times x upon 1 plus n times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 upon n dx. This is equal to integral x raised to the power n minus 1 times in brackets 1 plus n times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power minus 1 upon n dx. Now let 1 plus n times x raised to the power n be equal to t. Taking the derivative of both sides we have n square times x raised to the power n minus 1 dx is equal to dt. And therefore this integral is equal to 1 upon n square times integral t 
raised to the power minus 1 upon n dt which is equal to 1 upon n square times t raised to the power 1 minus 1 upon n divided by 1 minus 1 upon n plus the constant of integration. This is equal to 1 upon n square times 1 upon n minus 1 upon n times t raised to the power 1 minus 1 upon n substituting the value of t this is 1 plus n times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 minus 1 upon n plus the constant of integration. This simplifies and is equal to 1 upon n times n minus 1 times in the numerator 1 plus n times x raised to the power n whole raised to the power 1 minus 1 upon n plus the constant of integration and this is the required answer.